Hello everyone, what we are going to be looking at today is how to reconstruct a segmented spine in 3D Slicer. 3D Slicer is one of the most popular open source medical imaging applications. We need to uh, download the recent version and also we will need the Plus Toolkit which is another software that communicates with hardware devices and sends the data in real time to 3D Slicer. Plus has many additions, so we are looking up here what is appropriate for our hardware, which is Telemed Ultrasound and OptiTrack for real-time optical tracking. So we need to download the Telemed Win32 edition of Plus to operate these hardware devices. Once all these um, software are installed, Slicer and Plus, we still need to install some Slicer extensions. The easiest way to find them is to search for OpenIGT link. OpenIGT link is the communication interface. I've already installed it, so um, I don't need to press install here. The other is Slicer IGT extension that we are going to be using. And the third one is IGSIO, which uh, contains the 3D volume reconstruction. So once we have these in Slicer, we can start Plus, which is communicating with the hardware in real time. So in my case, I have a Telemed ultrasound and an OptiTrack optical tracker plugged into my computer. So when I start Plus, Plus connects to these hardware devices using a Plus config file that um, sets up, specifies the hardware. And the documentation on how to write Plus config files is available in on this plus website so we have created um, an open IGTN connection in slicer which receives the images and the tracking information from plus the image is displayed um, if we just display the untracked image it's going to be in its default position in the 3d viewer we need to use the transform hierarchy to uh, apply the image to reference transformation on the image which we originally receive in the image coordinate system. And finally, we need to apply the volume reslice driver on the red 2D viewer, so it follows the image as we move the ultrasound. So the next thing that we need is the AI component. If we go to um, the Slicer IGT GitHub repositories, then AIGT is the one for the AI models. You can, clone, you can clone it on your computers. It's open source. And then add the um, Slicer module Python files to the additional module paths in Slicer. So this is how we can add a custom module to 3D Slicer. After a module has been added, Slicer needs to be restarted. If you don't have TensorFlow installed in the Python environment of 3D Slicer, you also have to do that for this to run on your computer. Now that we have done this, we have a simple um, slicer module that uses a unit, an already trained unit, to segment the images in real time. So we have loaded this trained model. Now we select the input image, we create an output image, which is going to be the prediction of where um, bones are in the ultrasound image. Slicer can visualize two uh, volumes at the same time, but we need to transform the prediction volume as well. So it, with the image to reference transform, so that they are both the ultrasound image and the prediction image are in the same location, and we can see them in the same viewer. Here, I just uh, scan my arm, just random, um, a random place, not the spine. So um, this the AI uh, model doesn't have a really it doesn't do a really good job um, recognizing my arm bones but we verified that it's working and we can also blend the two images with different colors so the prediction image here is between black and red while the ultrasound image is from black and white back to white and again I'm just scanning my arm here using the spine segmentation module model just to see if it's working. Um, you can download um, from this website, pocus.cs.queensu.ca, the um, 
training data sets that we have used for training the spine segmentation unit that we are going to be using today. And you can also download the original uh, recorded slicer scenes, which contain the time series that was recorded uh, in these tracked ultrasound acquisitions. So here I've loaded an example. Again, the image needs to be transformed by the image to reference transformation. And we're using the sequence browser toolbar to um, navigate in the time series of this ultrasound. Here we create a region of interest where the output volume will be reconstructed. If it's a live volume reconstruction, then we don't know how large the output volume is, so we need to define a region in space that will surely contain the area that we are scanning. And now we are using the segmentation unit um, example module. This is um, only a few dozen lines of code. It loads a Keras model, takes an input image, and um, creates an output image of the same size. It applies the unit and generates the prediction images live whenever the ultra input ultrasound image changes. Of course, the output prediction image also needs to be transformed by the image to reference transformation. Here I'm hiding the region of interest. We don't need to see that anymore. And now that we have applied the unit um, module, we can again set up the overlay between the ultrasound image and the prediction image so the, we can see them both at the same time. But for best uh, visualization, we will switch to red color in the prediction image. These, uh, these are standard image viewer options that um, work with all imaging modalities here. So as we um, browse the timeline or replay the original recording, track the ultrasound recording, we can see that the um, unit is segmenting bones uh, in real time. So we um, now we can reconstruct this either offline or online. So we are now going to simulate live volume reconstruction. Um, so we switch to the volume reconstruction module. We set it up. Uh, we specify the input parameters, and we start it. So now, when we replay this ultrasound recording, the volume reconstruction module is reconstructing a 3D volume um, in real time as new ultrasound images um, and new prediction images are being generated. We are using the prediction image as the input for volume reconstruction. So when we visualize the reconstructed volume, this is not the original ultrasound, but this is the 3D reconstruction of the bone prediction images, where we, of course, apply the same tracking information that we had for the uh, original ultrasound images. We can use the um, same volume reconstruction options and parameters that are available for CT or MRI in 3D Slicer. Of course, ultrasound is not as detailed as a CT volume would be of the spine, so um, we need some anatomical knowledge to mentally reconstruct an, uh, of the full spine from these images. This is only the posterior surface that is accessible for ultrasound, but we can see the lamina parts of the vertebrae in the middle and as the ribs attach to the vertebrae from the sides. Here I've speed up the video so we finish the entire spine scan so we can see the re final result. And um, this particular application, in this particular application, we we measure spine curvatures by using uh, standard markups of in, in available in 3D Slicer for angle measurement. But um, but you can see the reconstructed um, posterior surface of the entire spine.